Hey, we got a really good question from our buddy Sam, who works for his dad. Sam's 22 years old. His dad owns a landscaping company, and Sam works for his father in this company. Apparently, there's a power struggle going on between Sam and his father. Apparently, Sam's dad dogs him, according to Sam anyway. Dogs him, gives him a hard time, treats him worse than the other employees. Now Sam comes to us wanting to have a better relationship with his dad. He wants to work for his dad. He wants to work with his dad, but he does not appreciate the oppression. He's wondering now, should I just quit working for my father, go in and build my own business, do my own thing, and then suffer the consequence of not having a good relationship with my father? Or is there a way that I can help mend things up because I would like to enjoy my father's presence and I, and I want to work for him? You know, things can go well, and they have gone well, but right now, I'm struggling. Here's the thing, Sam, you've got to recognize that there is a very strange dynamic that goes on between fathers and sons, and it is a microcosm of what happens in society. Men, in particular, have a, an aggressive character, right? This is, just, this is just typically male. We go out and we want to achieve, we want to strive, we want to, we create wars. We're, there's, there's always someone on top of us that we're looking to crush and then climb up. And I'm not saying that this is all men, and I'm not saying that there are no women this way, but what I'm saying is it's a very male characteristic. It's very characteristic of male energy. And when you've got two men in a home and both are struggling for positions of power especially when there's one that is you know based on the patriarchal hierarchy is above the other one you run into a situation where the one that's below the one above will fall into one of three different categories of behavior right so you've got your father and you've got you right and the power struggle is such that you're becoming a man you are a fucking man and uh, and your dad is, is still exerting himself as if he's, you know, big daddy. And, and I'm going to show you exactly why he's making a big mistake, especially for your development and your psychological development and the way you proceed in the world. So you've got one of three things that is typically going to happen, right? And it goes like this. Number one, the person below will typically yield. You can get this type of response. You yield to the person above, but resentfully so. So you'll bite your tongue, you'll bite your lip, you'll do as told, but inside there's a growing seed of resentment and that is going to show up in your relationships with your wife, with your friends, with your child, right? Because we pass this shit on. Your dad's doing it to you and all that resentment that you have for the oppression, you're going to subconsciously do to your children or you do it to your dog, do you see? But that resentment is there, that seed of of anger, frustration, and defiance that you just can't act out because you've decided, you've chosen to yield to the power structure, it's growing in you, <sighs> right? It's like a cancer inside you. That's one option. A lot of men in society, this is what we do when we go to jobs that we hate, when we go see bosses that are oppressive to us. This is what I mean when I say we become slaves to a system because we're doing what we're told, yes sir, yes sir, yes, yes sir, to the power structure, but there's this seed of resentment that grows and grows like a cancer and eats at you. So I'm gonna say that a good percentage, maybe 75% or more, end up in, the, in this place. We just bite our tongue and we take it up the ass. Then you've got the second type of person that just completely rebels, says, fuck this, I can't deal with it, I'm rebelling, and finds a way to destroy the whole fucking thing, right? This is a very rebellious type of person, and it can manifest itself positively in their rebellion. They're basically saying, you know what, I'm, gonna, I'm making this shit work for me, I don't care what anybody says. Or they can say, I'm just destroying everybody and everything in my way and they become a very destructive type person. They, they may become an alcoholic, they may, um, they may make everyone else's lives miserable in their rebellion because they, they're, they're, they're not soft enough, right? When I say soft, I'm, I'm literally saying that they're not as much of pussies as the other guys, 75%, because they're not willing to bite their lip and suck it down, but they're just as dysfunctional because they're letting it out but they're shitting and vomiting all over the place and making everybody, including themselves, miserable. 
right? That's typically what happens, and you, and you see this in the way the person carries himself. Or the other, you know, that within that one option, that person in their rebelliousness could create some kind of good. And then there's a third option, and this is the healthy option. This is the option that our ancestors recognized when they created rites of passages for young boys to become men, which we don't have anymore, right? Young boys never get that opportunity to know when they're, they, they're becoming a man. Like a little girl, she gets her period. Bang, blood all over the place, you're a woman now, right? For boys, it's like, well, when am I actually a man, you know? I beat my dad in an arm wrestle. I, I remember that day like it was yesterday very important day to me, but I'm not sure what, what it meant to him and I'm not sure what it means to anybody else. But it had to do with physical strength and the opportunity to one up that which is above. But it's not an official, celebrated, recognized passage into manhood, right? So where am I going with this? That third option would, if it was to be executed healthily, would look like this. A young man exerts himself as becoming a man and the power structure above that that which is above recognizes and sees this in the young man coming up and develops an opportunity to yield and let that boy become a man now that's the problem your dad doesn't want to yield to you and allow you to become a man because he's too far wrapped up in his bravado he's too wrapped up in his maleness he's so male that he's a pussy. I don't know if that makes sense. You understand that? He's so male that he's not willing to embed or, or, or accept the femininity, femininity associated with true maleness, with, the ba with a balanced male. That's what I'm trying to say. A balanced male knows how to exert himself, but he also knows when to say, hmm, that's a balanced male. But he's so imbalanced because it's all, you're not going to get the best of me. I'm still the fucking man. I'm still your daddy. Right? That he's a pussy. It takes a lot of courage. It takes a lot of, a, of balls to yield, especially to your son. And he's not willing to do that. Right? So I would invite you as a young man and myself, I recognize this and I, I paid attention to this and I have a son to at some point recognize that your son will need to exert himself as a man. And as they say, an old saying is that a student must kill his master. You will have to die as the dominant or seemingly dominant aggressive force in the home or in the relationship or the dynamic between you and your emerging man of a son. Now, in your situation, right? Because that gives you kind of a perspective for what the hell's going on, right? Your, your dad's too much of a pussy to man up and um, it doesn't mean he's a bad man it just means that he's, he's not aware of these things you are and now you're in a situation where you've got to do one of those three things right do you bite your lip do you bite your lip and you suck it down and you just keep do being a yes man and ignoring your heart ignoring your balls and just not becoming a real man do you fight throw it all away just like make his life miserable destroy the business just explode while you guys are on the job or do you find for yourself do you step outside of the relationship with him and find for yourself a place where you can execute and exert yourself as a man within a power structure that's willing to yield and allow you to mature guess what that third option is available to you and you've alluded to the fact that you're willing and able to step out on your own, build your own business as a speaker and a, a radio personality, something like that I think you described. But what it's going to require is a ton of courage to step away from the confines and structure that your family has, has created for you, step out into a cold, cold world that really, it's completely objective, does not care about you, and make your own way for yourself as a man, not so that you can have the things associated with wealth and grandeur, right? Those things come. But so that you can grow and become someone, become a stronger version of yourself. So that you can grow and become more of a stronger man, right? The reason why we do what we do and the reason why it, it's, it's so beautiful in our culture, our country, and you know many, many others throughout the world where you can go out and make a living for yourself is because you not only 
find a way to put food on the table by serving other people, but you become the type of man that all men should ultimately become. And that is one who has exerted himself within a structure that allows him to recognize, appreciate, and cultivate the self-esteem that is owed him. So that's it, man. Go out there, do your thing. You have to step away. Love your father, bow down one more time, step away. And it's not a severing of relationships, keep it peaceful. It's not a severing of ties. It's not a removing of your heart from the situation and, and the relationship. It is merely you now realizing you've got to go and clip the umbilical cord and become a man on your own. And it's going to be scary. It's going to require a lot of courage, but you will be a man, a bigger man, your own man on the other end of the wall. Good luck, buddy. Elliot said, Elliot. what? what?